Hi guys, so today's video is going to be a trilogy review for the Folk of the Air series by Holly Black. The majority of this is going to be completely spoiler free, so even if you haven't read the first one, no worries, I won't be spoiling any of the events in any of the three books. At the very end of the video though, I am going to get into a little bit of spoilers for the last one. This is a single point of view fantasy series that follows a girl named Jude, who is human at the beginning of the story, her parents are murdered by a fae who then feels it's his obligation to take the children and raise them as his own. Jude was very young when this happened, so most of her life has taken place in the fae world, or at least most of her life that she can remember. She is very used to their culture, their customs, and in their world, the fae can't lie, but Jude can because of the fact that she is human. She is very much looked down upon, she is picked on, she is constantly belittled by basically all of the Fae, and her father figure, despite being the one who murdered her parents, has come to be somebody whose approval she seeks, which is very morbid and very twisted, but it's a good indication of what most of the relationships in this book are like. It's definitely very fairy tale like There are a lot of things that make this quite lush, the descriptions of the clothing, the descriptions of the scenery, all that kind of stuff is something that if you like fairy tales, you're probably gonna eat that stuff up. Not necessarily a hunky-dory fairy tale though. A lot of the story, as the names imply, are rooted in the fact that Jude is so put down all the time, and one of the main culprits of all this would be the character Cardin. Cardin is constantly, constantly a thorn in Jude's side. And he goes, I would say, beyond that and being kind of a threat to her life on multiple occasions. He's terrible. And so a lot of this book is this very interesting dynamic between Jude and Cardin, this girl who has had a very strange, morbid upbringing and kind of seeks to fit in with the Fae despite how terrible they are. And then we see Cardin who, while we never get his perspective, you definitely get the sense of him being cruel and wicked and him wanting to put her down, him wanting to feel better than her, but also being somewhat fascinated by her. Their relationship is definitely very twisted and that is the case with basically all the relationships in this story. While I would say a big part of the fandom definitely focuses on the relationship between Jude and Cardin, the relationship between Jude and her father figure, as well as her relationship with her two sisters are also just as fascinating and strange and things that you definitely don't want to try and emulate. While it seems like the wickedness is pretty much entirely attributed to Faye, you see Jude and her twin sister definitely get caught up in a lot of this. Her sister is her twin, but it's her polar opposite in so many ways. And the family dynamics, if you like that in stories, I definitely think, especially if you like morbid family dynamics, that you're going to enjoy that a lot. The agency of our main character is definitely something that is really fun to see. She has a lot of drive, and while I don't know that we always approve of the reasons for why she does things or how extreme she can be, it's always very intriguing to see how she tries to attain the things that she wants. Because she has the ability to lie, she ends up kind of finding herself in a position where she might be able to become one of the Fae's spies. There's a lot of intrigue in this world. The Fae are quite violent, maybe isn't the right word, although they kind of are in some ways, but they try to not ever have to resort to all out war, despite the fact that there are tons of people trying to claw their way to the throne, claw their way to more power. And the reason they don't end up going into all out war is because it's very difficult for the Fae to reproduce. And so for them, if they can try to scheme their way to the top, that's the avenue they're gonna go down. Obviously, with Jude's ability to lie, she fits into this very well, and because people constantly look down at her and she doesn't really have magical abilities like a lot of the Fae do, she isn't really paid much attention to, so that kind of makes her doubly a threat. And so I really enjoyed seeing how she kind of finds her place in this world and the fact that even though they're constantly really terrible to her, they're really terrible to each other. Tons of scheming, tons of intrigue. If you like that kind of stuff, probably right up your alley. Things that might not make this series for you are the more morbid 
relationships. If you are looking for something that feels healthy and you're looking for good friendships and stories and couples that you ship because they just seem so cute and nice together, if you're looking for that kind of story, that's really not what this is. Also, while I would say that the second and third ones move along at a pretty quick pace, I would say this is not necessarily an action-packed story. It's not that there aren't high stakes moments, but when I think fantasy and I think action, I usually think some kind of battle or fight scene. And there's some hints of that here and there, but like I said before, so much of the story is focused in the scheming. And so you're really not going to get all out battles. You're not going to get people planning tactics and things like that, kind of the way you see in some other fantasy stories. Also, while some portions of the story are very lush and very descriptive, they are very short books. So they're very to the point. And I find that certain things, certain character development moments, things like that, sometimes feel a little bit fast. I don't dislike that necessarily when I think of it kind of objectively. I mean, for some people, they're not looking to spend an entire book of a character growing into somebody who's maybe a little less judgmental or something. They, while well, I love that kind of stuff and I love just sitting with characters and watching them turn into different people over a long period of time, in a short book, you might find that some of that is cut out and certain characters, maybe they forgive each other faster than you would expect or maybe they come to hate each other faster than you expect. A lot of things maybe happen quicker, but the books are short and if you're looking for something that is a good, fun, maybe a series that you can read in a single week, you can just binge it, enjoy it for what it is, I would say this definitely fits the bill. That's it for the non-spoiler portion of this review. So if you don't wanna be spoiled, stop watching now. This first thing that I wanna say, not necessarily heavy spoilers, but I definitely didn't wanna talk about it in the non-spoiler portion. And that would be how happy the end of this trilogy is. And I'm not saying I need everybody to die. I'm not saying I need things to go terribly wrong to enjoy a book, but I just was surprised. The biggest thing I found that played into this for me was how nice Cardin was. Cardin was nice. It was like he was a completely different person. I will say I definitely enjoyed at the end of the book when you get to see all the little notes that he sent to her that never got around to her. Those were entertaining. That was one of my favorite things about the story, weirdly. But I just found he wasn't really schemy or cruel in the slightest. And sometimes Jude's feelings toward him whenever she would think, I need to tell him I love him. I think I might actually love him. Then he would say one thing that wasn't even close to being terrible in how terrible he was before. It was just, he would just say something and then she would think, ugh, or maybe I hate him after all. And it wasn't really at all the same as how their relationship used to be. And I, it's funny because I'm not displeased with the fact that their relationship in the end turned out nice. I don't want bad things for our characters. I don't want super unhealthy relationships for them or anything, but it was every relationship basically turned out pretty good, except for her with her father figure, Maddox. Even, I would say they were the exception because he basically almost killed her at that moment. He, he did kill her. She just happened to heal herself up with the earth magic. But other than that, I feel like even her and her twin, who is so frustrating in the first two books, I hated that girl and I loved to hate her in the first two books. I loved to hate her and stupid Locke. And he's just out of the picture. And I know there was some I think there is a short story or something that can you can read. And I, I didn't even realize until I read these, like, oh, I, I guess maybe I should have read that. But he's just out of the picture now. So one of the things I love to hate about the story was gone. Her sister's like, I'm pregnant. So that means, you know, just all's forgiven, right? And it's like, yeah, all's forgiven for your baby, which I'm kind of glad for the baby's sake. But at the same time, I'm like, but can we also hold her a little bit more accountable? I mean, she was terrible in the first couple of books. She was the worst sister. I don't know. I just feel like Jude and her, maybe there should have been a little bit more feuding, a little more animosity between the two of them. I wanted to really like the two of them with their sisterhood in the end. I wanted to like that they were closer in the end, but it just felt too fast. 
I don't know. Jude doesn't come across to me like the kind of person that's like, all is forgotten and just no worries, no big deal. <laughs> I feel like she'd constantly still be on the fence about that whole thing, especially finding out that her sister maybe has a little bit more fight in her than she realized because Chick murdered her husband. So I feel like I would be a little bit more uh, wary of her. Getting back to Jude and Carden though. Carden to me was just, I was glad that he wasn't terrible anymore, but he was so terrible and it felt a little bit like that trope of, oh, he's just misunderstood. He just doesn't have anybody to love him. And I'm not, my dog is grunting. I'm not saying that that trope isn't a fairly realistic thing. There are a lot of people that are very wounded in the world. They're very alone. And I don't hate that trope. I actually kind of like that trope a little bit, but I like that trope, I think, when we have more time to develop it. It just felt like a complete 180. Cardin was this terrible, despicable person who put Jude in danger a lot of times, treated her like trash. And then now he's like, I can't live without you. I love you. It even felt a little out of character for, I don't know how to say her name, Nicasia? That's how I'm gonna say it. It even felt a little out of character for her to be like, you don't understand, Jude, now that he's a snake monster, it's just, he was actually nice this whole time. Nobody understood that he's actually really nice. No, you guys were all terrible. And now suddenly it's like, JK guys, we're actually all really good. It just felt out of place because I feel like the Fae kind of prided themselves on being sneaky and scheming and a little bit terrible. And now it's like, but we're not though. Jude, we're not though. And it felt, it didn't feel like they were trying to trick her into believing that so they could later on stab her in the back or something like that. It legitimately felt like, no, you don't understand. You just don't understand us. And I don't know. I, I kind of wanted at least one person besides Maddox. I wanted at least one person to be like, just kidding. I am as bad as you thought I was. And not because I don't like happy endings, because I really did enjoy how sweet the ending was, and I'll get into the things I did like, but it was more that the second book was so good, I thought, at being scheming, constantly being unsure about people's motivations, and I really enjoyed that about the second book. I feel like that's the thing with this trilogy, or at least that's the thing I had come to expect from this. So the third one being so happy wasn't bad, it just felt so different from what I was expecting. The snake monster part, I do want to talk about that, him turning into a snake. So I wish that we had, maybe if I reread the series, I would think differently. And if you guys are like, no, she definitely was setting this up from the beginning because of this, this, and this, and this, let me know. But I mentioned, I did a, a wrap up recently, and I mentioned in the wrap up that the third book to me felt slightly removed as far as the plot went from the first two. I feel like the character development kind of ended. Not that nobody grew at all in the third book. It's just, it felt like where they were in the third book, they stayed there and it was more plot driven. And I felt like the first couple were way more character driven where that third one, the plot felt so removed and it felt like a fairy tale, him turning into this monster. It could have gone both ways. Could have been happier, could have been really tragic, but ultimately, that whole plot line felt so removed from the first two and the thing that kind of drove you to want him to live or to care was the character development that happened in the first two which is okay i was just surprised at how different it felt not let down necessarily just surprised i feel like most of the spoiler portion has basically just been me being like this didn't go about the way i was expecting it to so things <laughs> that aren't quite whiny and me talking about things that I liked. I mentioned I really liked the little letters at the end. I thought that was really funny. I also, I really liked the very end. It was so hunky-dory and kind of cheesy almost because it was just so happy. But I did like, ima I liked imagining Cardin in the mortal world eating pizza. For some reason, that just, tickle my fancy. I just really liked that. Also, I liked that Cardin immediately knew it was not her sister. I liked that he was like, um, Jude, I know you're back. You could have excused yourself, you know. <laughs> I liked that he just knew immediately, and I liked that we didn't waste any time with her getting back. I 
when I got the book, I was like, wow, this is way shorter than I was expecting. I thought the finale would be a lot longer, which I probably would have enjoyed it being longer. But I do like that it wasn't the super long, her just being in the mortal world and her being bored and sad that she got tricked. And I'm glad it wasn't a bunch of that because I think I would have gotten bored. I'm glad that she pretty much immediately was back in the Fae world and things were going down and she had to just quick, fast paced. I like that it was fast paced. I like that stuff was going on quick. And I think it's a double edged sword because there were definitely things I would have liked maybe elaborated on more or maybe there was more scheming, more things in her way. In the end, I think the second one is still my favorite. I just think it had such a good level of intrigue, such a good level of scheming. Part of the reason why I think I was so surprised in the third one that Cardin was this kind of nice changed guy was because the whole second book, Jude, he actually was, when I reflect on it, he really wasn't bad in the second book, but she was constantly wondering if he was, if he was bad, if he was scheming. And because she was thinking that the whole second book, I was thinking that. So when we got to the third one and it's like, no, dude, I've been decent for a while. Can you just believe I'm decent? And I was like, I don't know that I can believe it. And then when he was just so 100% a decent person now, I was like, I guess he's decent. That seems so out of nowhere, but really it wasn't that out of nowhere. I just liked in the second one that we were constantly on the fence not knowing. And I think in the third one, now they're on the same team. It just has a different feel to it. But I would have liked, I think, the two of them scheming against the other Fae. I think I would have liked that a lot. But instead it was them kind of, something bad happens to Cardin and then now Jude's got to figure out what's best for her, what's best for the Fae world, all that kind of stuff. So it just didn't go about the way I was expecting. Second one was still my favorite. I'm definitely really curious to know of the of these three, which did you like the most? Anyway, that is it for my spoilery chat for the third one. And obviously that's it for the whole trilogy review. Let me know your thoughts on this trilogy. Did you love it? Did you hate it? what do you think of the ending? Definitely write spoilers if you wanna talk spoilers so that anybody who watched up through the non-spoiler part doesn't get spoiled just because they happen to see something in the comments. That's it though. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you all later. Bye.